Hey guys, I thought I'd break down a circuit for you as we prepare for our test tomorrow. Uh, I've got a circuit out here. I've labeled all the resistors R1 through R5 with a source, a source voltage of 30 volts. We're looking for one, the equivalent resistance, and then we're going to break down the circuit to find all voltage drops and currents. And finally, we'll, we'll determine the cost to run this circuit for 10 days at 15 cents per kilowatt hour. So let's start with the equivalent resistance. Uh, hopefully you can recognize that there are some of these pieces that are in series, some are in parallel. I'm going to walk you through our redraw method where we can kind of reorganize this circuit to make it a little more visually appealing. And we're going to start at the source, 30 volts. We're going to label all of our nodes where it transitions, A, B, C, and D. And leaving from the positive of the source, we're going to have to pass through the 5 ohm resistor to get to A. From A, it splits two ways, create our bracket. A goes to B, where we get another split. It splits two ways. We go the long way to C. You're going to pass through R5, which is 18 ohms. Or you can go the short way, and you're going to pass through a 4 ohm and a 3 ohm resistor. Those meet up at C. C goes to D, and now we can look back here, and A goes to D as well. So if we pass through that 12 ohm resistor, we go all the way to D, and that goes back to our source. So when we do this, we start to see that we have a circuit that the lines that are actually parallel are parallel resistors, which makes it a little bit easier visually. And we can simplify within each, each branch. So if you look at this 4 and 3 ohm branch, they're in series. So I can combine them and say that they are a combined of 7 ohms. And now I can either see this as three different pathways, one through an 18 ohm resistor, one through a 7 ohm, and one through a 12 ohm. And I can use my parallel rule to find the combined resistance of those three pathways. Or I can break down the 3 and the 18 first and combine that with the 12. For the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and just do all three at once. That 5 is in series. It has to go through there, so I'm going to add that. And then I have this parallel combo. We have 18, and my resistance equation in parallel is 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. We can use that inverse function. So 18, 1 over 18 is 8 to the, to the negative 1. The combined resistance of 4 and 3 is 7, so I'm going to treat that like a 7 ohm resistor. And the 12. And then uh, everything's under a denominator, under a radical or a, uh, a dividing bar. And if I pull out my calculator, I can calculate this equivalent resistance. 5 plus combination 18 to the negative 1 plus 7 to the negative 1 plus 12 to the negative 1. And I'm going to raise the whole thing and make sure I close my parentheses to the negative 1. And I get 8.55 ohms. 8.55 ohms is my equivalent resistance. R E Q. Clean that up a little bit. So what this means is that this circuit can effectively be redrawn like this: 130 ohm, 30 volt source with a 8.55 ohm equivalent resistance which means we can actually calculate our total current. And I total, using Ohm's law, is going to be the supply voltage over the equivalent resistance, which is going to be 30 volts over 8.55 ohms. And so we know the total current coming out of that source is going to be 30 divided by that answer we just got, which is 3.51 amps. So going back to my original circuit, I now know, as I break it down, that the current coming out of the source, I total, is 3.51 amps. So I'm going to create a little table that kind of makes it a little bit easier. Here's our resistors. We have R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. And each of those, excuse me, let me, jump to a different page on me. Each of those is going to have a voltage and a current. And so we can create a little table. It's a nice way to organize it and calculate each of them as we go. So if we look here, we have a total current of 3.51 amps as our total. 
right? And that means that R1, because it's in series, will also see all 351 amps. It's the only one in series, so it gets all the current. Now, because I know that R1 is 5 ohms, I'm just going to write out all the values here for what we have. I can use V equals IR, and I can solve for the voltage. 3.51 times 5 gives me a voltage drop of 17.5 volts across that first one. So now I've, I've broken down the first resistor. Now we need to go into our loop rule for voltage. Every pathway back to the source drops all the voltage. So one pathway goes through the 5, the 12, and back to the source. That loop has to drop 30 total volts. And we've already dropped 17 and a half across the 5 ohm, which means across the 12 ohm resistor would be 30 minus 17 and a half, which should be 12 and a half volts. So I can write in 12.5 volts as a voltage drop across the 12 ohm resistor R2. And using Ohm's law, since we have V and R, I can take that 12 and a half divided by the resistance of 12. And I now know the current of 1.04 amps goes across that R2. And that means the remaining current, the other, if I take 3.51 minus 1.04, that difference has to go across the other loops. Now, if I look at the other two loops, because, again, we dropped 17 and a half volts, 12 and a half volts has to go through each pathway, which means I know that R5 also has to be 12 and a half volts. It's the only resistor in that pathway. That long loop going through R1, then R5, and back to the source drops 30 volts. And so we know 12 and a half plus 17 and a half equals 30. So R5 is 12 and a half volts. And since we have the 18 ohms, we can find the current through that one. And so 12 and a half divided by 18 gives me 0.69. 0 0.69 amps is the current here. Now, since the total current is 3.51, and two of those three branch ways have 1.04 and 0.69, then I know that 0.51 minus the 0.69 we just got minus the 1.04 leaves us with only 1.78 uh, amps of current through that br middle branch way. And since it's in series, we know that 1.78 amps has to pass through both R3 and R4. And in doing so, V equals IR, I can multiply one of those by 4, find its voltage drop of 7.1. And since it has to add up to 12 and a half, I can either subtract or I can say that 1.78 times 3 will give me the remainder, which is going to be 5.34. Now, if I add 7.1 and 5.34, we should get roughly 12.5. It's slightly off. I'm going to round this up to make it nice and clean. That's just some rounding errors in my calculator. But now we've broken down this circuit. We found the voltage drops and the currents across every resistor, and we would say this circuit is broken down. So the last thing I want to do is determine the cost to run this circuit for 10 days. So one thing we can do is take those individual currents. We know that power equals current times voltage. So we can multiply each one of these currents and voltages and get our power. So I can take 17.5 times 3.51, and that's the power of 61.4 watts. And I can do the same thing going all the way down for each one, and that would be the power of every appliance as you go. Now, another thing we can do is just take that equivalent resistance. So the power of the circuit would be the current of the circuit times the total voltage of the source. So we know the total current is 3.51, and the voltage is 30. And so I can say the power is 3.51 times 30 is going to be 105.3 watts. And that's our power. Now, energy 
is equal to power times time, which is going to be our 105 watts. And since we're going to go in kilowatt hours, let's convert it to 0 0.105 kilowatts. So 0 0.105 kilowatts. And they ask us, what's it going to be for five for 10 days? Well, our time is 10 days. Let's get that to hours. There are 24 hours in one day. So that's going to be 240 hours of time. So I can plug that right in here, 240 hours. And when I take 240 hours, change it to kilowatts. Oops, sorry, you got to divide. Let's try that again. 0 0.105 times 240 gives me 25.2 kilowatt hours of energy. And we know it at a cost, 25.2 kilowatt hours at 15 cents per one kilowatt hour. If I multiply that by 0.15, I get the cost to run this, which is 3.78, which would be $3.78. So we've done a bunch of things here in this circuit, just kind of recapping. We've taken a circuit, we've broken it down to find an equivalent resistance to find using our redraw method, then simplified that to one simple circuit with one equivalent resistance to find our total current. And then we were able to go through and use our Kirchhoff's laws with current and voltage and series in parallel to fill out our table. Finally, we took our circuit, determined its power output, and using that and the time it takes to run it, found our total energy use of 25.2 kilowatt hours and translated that to the cost we would pay to the electric company of $3.78 to run this circuit, whatever this might be, uh, for 10 consecutive days. Hope this is a good example for you to review for tomorrow. Uh, feel free to email me with any questions.